Hey guys, welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of Obsolete. Um, Famico Man, and uh, today we're going to be wrapping up the last content which I filmed before I actually started Season 2. This is a segment on running Risk OS on your Raspberry Pi, and it was filmed a little bit ago, but not much has really changed. The version of Risk OS which I used was a couple versions behind, but really not much has changed. I think the last version of Risk OS released for the Raspberry Pi was done so about two or three months after the version that I used. And um, raspberrypi.org changed their download page a little bit, but it's, it's pretty much the same. So I found all the lost footage, I've put it together, and I've got the episode. So without further ado, I'm going to take it in to running Risk OS on your Raspberry Pi. So by now you've probably heard about the Raspberry Pi. If not, I feel like I should try to elaborate a little bit. The Raspberry Pi is a credit card sized computer, as you can see here. I have uh, two of them out. Um, they're relatively cheap, they're only about 35 bucks, and you can pick them up pretty readily online now. Uh, there's two different models that I'm showing you today. They're both technically Model B, um, but the one on the right is part of the first release, and the one on the left is part of the 1.2 revision. The only real difference is that the first release has 256 megabytes of RAM, while the revision has 512. Um, for what we're doing, we're installing Risk OS, so it doesn't really matter which one you get, both of them will work more than well for you. So, to give you a little bit of background, uh, these Raspberry Pis run using an ARM processor, which you probably haven't heard of too much unless you're from the UK. Uh, normally when you get a desktop machine now, you'll have an x86 processor, 64-bit. It's, it's just a different type of architecture. So these use ARM architecture, which you're not really going to find in some sort of desktop computer, but you'd be surprised how many devices now use ARM chips. Uh, probably your cell phone, actually, which is kind of cool. The ARM chip was originally developed by Acorn in the 80s for their Archimedes line of computers, which came after the BBC Micro. So if you were in the UK in the 80s, you're probably very familiar with Acorn Computer. Um, other then from just having one, they were very popular in schools, the same way that Apple Computer uh, worked with education departments over here in the U.S. So a lot of people in schools in the U.S. had Apples, and a lot of people at schools in the U.K. had Acorns. So uh, we're going to be talking about Risk OS, and if you're unfamiliar, I'm going to show it to you in a bit. It's kind of like an early Mac OS, sort of. You'll, it, it's very different, but you'll, you'll see some familiar sort of things when I show it off to you. But yeah, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. So you can pick either model that you want. As you can see, there's a bunch of different little ports here. Um, you're going to need power through micro USB, so get yourself a micro USB cable and some sort of wall wart to power it with. You can see you got USB on the sides. You're not going to want to plug this into a computer to run off of because it probably won't supply the right amount of voltage. Uh, you're going to need some sort of display. So you can either do HDMI or you can do composite video. Uh, there's a 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for audio. You might want to do audio if you get a little more into this. Maybe not. You don't really need it. And there's uh, two USB jacks for a keyboard and mouse, which you're going to need, as well as an Ethernet jack. So if you're wondering where exactly the operating system goes, if you flip one of these over, you can see that there is an SD card slot, and we're going to actually be loading our operating system onto an SD card. So without further ado, let's go over and do that right now. So, in order to download Risk OS, we want to go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads. So if you just scroll down here, you can see Risk OS and there's a uh, direct download, get your zip file, you can choose a mirror if you want. And that's basically how you can download the image. 
Now when you actually have the image downloaded and you have your zip file, you can open it up and you'll see there's an image file. The zip archive is actually only 100 megabytes, but the image file is 2 gigabytes, so it compresses fairly well. So make sure you have enough space for that. Now I already have my SD card hooked up to my computer. I use a uh, class 10 16 gigabyte card. You really don't need anything that powerful. You probably only need a 2 gig card and you could probably get away with like a class 4 or class 8 or something. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to go all out for your SD card. Um, you're going to want to get Win32 Disk Imager if you have Windows. There's other tools available if you have uh, Mac or Linux. But um, since I'm on Windows, using Win32 Disk Imager, so you can just launch it by double clicking. Now you need to make sure that the correct SD card is chosen. Since I only have one, it's just coming up right here. And um, for the file, we need to get our file. So I want the RiscOS, and then you can just hit write. And um, yeah, you're writing to a physical device, it could corrupt it, but it's okay, we're just using this SD card for this, so you can click yes. And now it should write away fairly quickly. So I'm going to let this finish up right here, it's probably going to take just a little while. And um, let's go see what everything looks like after I have the card properly formatted, take it out, and uh, boot it up on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now we're actually going to go ahead and use RiscOS. Um, something I didn't mention before is you're going to need a three button mouse or at least two buttons and a scroll wheel. Uh, RiscOS is really dependent on having a three button setup, so you're going to need that to make the most of everything. Now, um, just getting everything out of the way, you can go over here into the little computer icon. You can see I've already set my resolution at 640 by 480. This is just because I'm capturing a standard definition. Uh, can't capture in HD, I don't have anything that can do that yet, so hopefully you guys will be able to see this okay. You can set this to pretty much anything you want to. Now um, you'll also notice this little Raspberry Pi icon over here. If I click this, I get something of a uh, primitive task manager, which is sort of cool. It, it, it's titled tasks and it has the memory allocation for everything, so it's, it's really interesting to kind of see something that breaks this down so readily. Now just looking at the desktop environment itself, um, I believe it's called a pin board in RISC. Um, you can see that there's your standard sort of desktop wallpaper. We have some applications here and we have the uh, taskbar which is also sort of like a dock. I'll show you how that's working in um, a couple moments here. But first, you know, we turn our attention to the pin board here. If I right click, it doesn't really do much. If I single click, I can, you know, highlight a whole portion of the screen, but if I middle click, then I get, you know, I, I have configuration options, which was probably terrible to do considering my resolution is so low, but you can customize everything. Um, you might also notice that we have some applications over here. There's NetSurf, which is a browser, and Strong ED, which is an editing tool. They don't have any file extensions. Um, applications are sort of prefixed here by having the exclamation point at the beginning of them, but there's no actual file extensions. Instead, RiscOS relies on metadata to distinguish between file types, which is something interesting to consider. But like, let's say I go here and I want to run strong ED. So, I can get it to run. Now this is similar to how Mac OS behaves. When you launch an application, it shows up in your dock down here. So if I right click, I can choose, you know, maybe I want to write something, oh, I don't know, Commodore 64, and then new window comes up. But let's say, okay, I'm done with writing my Commodore 64 file, close it out, it's still down here in the dock. This is very similar to how Mac behaves. Now, if I right click, it can't do anything. If I single click it, it'll bring it back up to the screen. But if I middle click it, here I actually have my options that I can go through and I would want to quit it, so it's gone. Now, you can see here, we don't really have necessarily like a start button like Windows has. There's an apps button, so you can 
sort of go into some of your apps um, and your resources, of course. So you have, you know, the editor, printers, browser, drawing, application, all sorts of stuff like this, all prefixed with the exclamation point. But you can also go into your storage here and you can actually break down everything into little windows. Once again, sort of like how early Mac OS behaves where it just opens up another window. And that's really cool to go through as well. Now, where I really like the, um, the interface here is not even the graphical interface, but if you hit F12, you can go into the shell. And um, the thing about RiscOS is that it behaves similarly to at least um, some of the, I guess, early Unix type operating systems. And like, if you think about Cisco, um, where say you want to do like a list command. If I do LIS period, then it knows that I'm trying to do a list. So if I do, let's try to even bring it back even more, LI period, still knows that I'm doing a list. L period, it doesn't know. So you can use shorthand like this, which makes it pretty interesting and um, easy to manipulate once you figure out all of the commands. And there are a ton of commands for this that you can look up and play with. Um, but my favorite thing that has been in all of the Risk OS versions is... So now I'm in BBC Basic, which is, of course, everybody's favorite 1980s hobbyist amateur programming language. So I can do something like 10 print. And um, unfortunately, since I don't have a uh, UK layout keyboard here, I have to do Shift 2 to get the quotation mark. So if I do twenty go to ten and run. So as you can see moonlit rules. And now if you've ever wondered what that whole pause break key on your keyboard does, hit that and I've escaped. And uh, yeah if I want to exit basic I believe it's just an exit. Hopefully I didn't get this wrong. Of course it did. Do a quit. And then hit enter again, then I'm back to the desktop. So that's, that's been sort of your primer on Risk OS. It's a very unique operating system. It has a lot of history. And it's kind of cool if you just want to play with it for a little while. It's not a lot like other operating systems. And as you can see, they've been working on this really hard. And it's, it's, it's very current even considering where it came from. So I hope you enjoyed this segment, and I hope you go and you uh, play around a little bit more with Risk OS, which is what I'm going to be doing right now. So I hope you guys liked that segment on running Risk OS on the Raspberry Pi. Um, big shout out goes to Moonlit for that, for being sort of my Risk OS guru, because he pretty much knows everything about it. And Moonlit, I'm really sorry if I botched anything because I just didn't understand it or something. Um, so that segment might not be perfect, but Moonlit really helped along with everything and probably gave a lot more information to me than I would have found by myself. So as for the next couple episodes of Obsolete, I'm still planning on keeping everything in the one segment per episode just so I can get everything out as soon as it's done and nothing's sitting around for a year. So I really hope to get some more projects filmed um, I'm currently working on probably about six projects that can be integrated into Obsolete. A lot of them have to do with the Raspberry Pi, so if you don't have one, then you should probably get one. But if you don't want to get one, you don't have any interest in it, there will definitely be some other segments that aren't Raspberry Pi oriented. But I just find that the Raspberry Pi is a really cool, cheap little device that you can do a lot with, and there's a lot of fun, retro-oriented projects that you can do with it. So I really hope to share some more of those. Uh, that said, I've also gotten some segment requests or ideas sent from other people. So if you have those, keep sending them over. Um, you can contact me by email. You can go on IRC. If you go to the website, you can comment on videos. You can go out to all the various video links for different services. You can um, follow me on the Facebook or Twitter page or Google Plus community. So that way you can get all the updates of what I'm doing. And I've also been working with the donations page. So 
in addition to accepting PayPal and Flatter, I now also accept cryptocurrencies. So if you have Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, you can feel free to send those over. Um, every little bit counts when it comes to donations. As I said earlier, I don't have anything that can capture HDMI yet. And I would really like to get something that can do that, although it's probably very expensive. But I want to get the best video that I can possibly capture. So I'm always working on stuff like that. I'm always getting hardware in that need little, little adapters or converters, which can go for a lot of money sometimes. And in addition to that, if you have any hardware you think I'd be interested in that you want to donate, you can again contact me through any of those above methods and I'll be sure to get back to you if I'm interested. And as I said earlier, special thanks to Moonlit for all of his Risk OS knowledge and for the music and for all of his feedback. Moonlit's great. Everybody go say thanks to Moonlit. So that will be it for this episode and I hope to get another one out fairly soon and I hope to see you guys there. So as always, let me know if I can do anything better, if you have any ideas, any improvements, suggestions, comments, questions, anything. Let me know and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys soon. Anytime.